welcome back to the tutorial on building the visual API. Today we're going to look at how to do image analysis. Now image analysis is very important and it's something that you probably haven't heard of because I actually have never seen it anywhere. But image, image analysis, it makes our state structure more effective. And it's very important because you don't want to get into a situation where you're doing trial and error programming. And typically what happens when you develop a automation application without the state structure, without um, image analysis, is that you select images to use to help you manipulate your environment. And at some point you, you realize that these images are not exactly, uh, they're not being found the way you want them to be found. It's not, they're not being found in the right situations or different images are being found where they shouldn't be found. And you end up tweaking your program. You end up uh, doing this trial and error type programming where you will change the minimum similarity so that the, it's found in situations where it's not found. Or you raise the minimum similarity in cases where other images are found where they shouldn't be found. And you change your coding in response to situations where it doesn't, your program doesn't do what you want it to do. And this is trial and error programming. This is what we want to avoid. And we can avoid this by doing an image analysis up front using our, the screenshots we saved, which is our representation of the target environment and using the images we've selected, we do this comprehensive analysis of those images on our target environment before we do any coding. This is exactly where we wanna do this because this analysis will save us a lot of time and a lot of frustration later on. This takes um, a lot of uncertainty out of the automation process. It means that our visual API is going to be less stochastic. A visual API is, is never 100% reliable because it never accesses directly the objects that it's trying to control. But we can control how reliable this visual API is and the process of doing image analysis, if done correctly, will greatly increase the reliability of our visual API. So without further ado, let's jump right in. We've done this screen capture. We don't need this anymore. You can um, comment that out. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to write the code for building it. We want the class build structure. Build structure with names. Okay. Oops, go structure with names and build. We're going to run the image analysis of the images that we've created on the screenshots that we've saved and it's going to create a state structure for us. And we're going to go through the image analysis first and if there's any changes we need to make based on the image analysis given to us, we'll make those changes. Maybe we'll add some images, maybe we'll change the um, file names of some images to change the attributes. And then when we are happy with the state structure that we have, then we can work with it. It's, it's created automatically for us. So here we go. Uh, let's run the application and see what happens here. Right now what it's doing is it's searching um, for the images that we defined in the screenshots that we've saved. Every time there's an operation where the attribute fails, uh, the attribute appears in red. So we've seen a couple times that there is an appears attribute that, uh, that shows up in red. And that means that we wanted to find an image on the specific page, the specific screenshot, and we didn't find it. So that's the first thing that we're going to go through. We're going to go through those places where we see attributes in red, and we're going to try to figure out how to fix that. So actually, I'm going to stop it now. Uh, it's almost done, but it doesn't. we don't need to create the state structure yet. Let's go through the image analysis 
and try to figure out what's going on with some of those failed attributes. Just going up to the top here, we see that the initial, um, this initial data here is, an, is every image. It gives the state of the image and the title of the image. It gives us what the file name is, and that's the size of the, of the image. That's the width and height of the image, and the attributes. So here, when you see that appears has a negative one on it, that means that it should appear on every single page, on every single screenshot. Um, when you see a specific uh, page right here, page 24, that means that we should perform a group define. This is a group define app attribute, which means that this, this image right here is part of an operation with other images to define a specific region. Um, this group define operation takes place on page 24. And you can actually, you can see, um, uh, you know, page 24, here are the screenshots. Page 24 corresponds to screen 24. That's this screenshot right here. Yeah. It's, all, it's referred to in the code often as a page also. So, um, the, okay, so let's, let's go down here. These are the names of the states and these are the images contained within the state. Okay, images and regions, because this right here is uh, converted into a state region, or it is transferred, it finds a region that is then transferred to the search regions of the other images. Depends on the operation that you want, depends on the how you specify that in the file name. So let's go into the analysis per page analysis. And here you have the first page that it looks at. Um, you have uh, it finds two images that are found. One is this map region, which is found in the minimap, and it gives you the file name or file names. This only has one file name of the image and the active attributes of on this page. There are no active attributes attributes and it finds one match and these are the coordinates of the match the coordinates are in format of this is the x and y position of the top left corner and this is the width and height of the match and same thing for a video title um, this the the name of this image is title and the state is bdo and it should appear here so there is an active active attribute and this is the match this underscore here codes for appears and there's no number here. It means that this should appear on every single page. And that's why you see on this page right here, the attribute appears. Whereas this one right here, it doesn't have an appears tag. There's no appears attribute. The attribute that it has is a region attribute. And the region attribute applies to page 15. The region attribute, what it does is it, it allows you to define a state region and it'll do that here on page 15. This map region image won't be written to the state structure as a state image object. It will only be written as a state region and that will be defined here. And that's why on this page, because this is page 117, uh, you don't have any attributes. And same thing here, you can see there are no attributes here on page 118 for map region, but there is an attribute for the title and it is appears because appears is on every single page. So let's go quickly to where we have read. This image has been encoded to appear in the pages 76, 122, 179, and 225. And this is page 122, right? This is the name of the screenshot, 122, page 122. And this file wasn't found, right? So the other files that should have been here were found, but this one wasn't found. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our screenshot and we're going to look at the um, image and we're gonna figure out what happened. So this is screen 122 and we want to look at the image W. So screenshots 122. and the image w which is this one right here okay so what looks like is it looks like what's happening is that this w even though it's the same form right here um, it will have a different contrast because it is a different color so there's going to be it's going to uh, it's not going to be an exact match and 
this is something that you can expect in a real run of an application. You're going to have uh, this. This is not always going to be in purple. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what they do in this game. I don't know how many colors they they show you, but um, most likely there's a few different colors and. You'll probably need, I think, so what you really want to avoid is you want to avoid having to tweak the minimum similarity of your images. Uh, that's, a, that's a process of trial and error. Um, the reason that you do the image analysis, the reason that its image analysis exists, is to avoid that type of trial and error programming. So you want your images to be as descriptive of the, of the expected image as possible. And obviously this, this one fails, okay? So we're gonna go through the other examples and we're gonna see what's going on with the other failures. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna to try to solve that problem. Okay, so um, let's go keep going through. And here's another one. Uh, there's this image A uh, doesn't appear on page 179. So let's go to page 179. Here we are, 179, and there's this image A that, we're want, that we want to look for, and the images, here's that image A. So it's a different color, all right? Um, basically, uh, the color is not, is not recognized with uh, Securely and with OpenCV, but the contrast would be recognized. And the grayscale, since it's in a different color, is, fairly, is pretty different from this grayscale here. Um, so, we have a problem, obviously, in recognizing these because they appear in different colors. And the easiest thing to, to address that is to create different um, images. Um, so capture different images of the different color, colors and include those different images into the same state image object. And there's a way to encode for that in the file name. Basically what you do is you, you'll you take um, this image right here and you'll save it as fish catch dash a and a number. So what I'm gonna do is I'll save this, I'm gonna cut this out, I'm gonna save it as fish catch dash a2. You don't need to add any attributes or features onto it. State image objects, they can include different file names. They can include multiple file names in one image. Okay, so here we are. What I did was I cut out three different images and I added those images here. These are the three images I, I got. Um, I took a W, two W's um, in different colors and I took A in a different color. So we should see that this should fix the problem that we had before. It might not, it might not fix everywhere. There should, there, there's probably some other colors. Where I think there's a bright yellow. Bright yellow would be a fairly large contrast. Having just these two should find also other colors, right? It's not that you have to have the exact same color. It's just that you have to have a, a similar enough contrast. Let's run this again. And this time I'm gonna let it run until the end so that it creates a state structure. And then we're gonna go through the state structure and I'm gonna explain some of the, the things that were performed in, in that operation. So here you see that actually this has been, we're here on page 122 and it looks like it's been found. The other one, the other page that we were looking at, there was 179, which is coming up and then 225. Oh, there you go, 179. It looks like everything was found. And also 225. Right, 225 still has a match that's missing. That looks like it's S. We didn't, I didn't cut out any additional S images. So there's, there's another one in there that you probably would wanna cut out if you were really going to use this program. Um, but this is just for illustrative purposes. So I'm not gonna do everything. We've done all the hard work of doing the image analysis and selecting and reselecting images. And now we have the images that we want. We can just lean back and let Robot do the, all the hard work for us of writing Java code and spitting out the state structure.